on Sunrise. More than a year after George Floyd's death, the man convicted of killing him will learn his fate. The prison sentence Derek Chauvin is facing could be far outside state guidelines. Plus, a desperate search for survivors after a condo building collapses in South Florida and the emotional reunions for those who made it out of the rubble. Sunshine in the forecast this Friday, but we have some rain this weekend. Now let you know when and where. And her dreams of a gold medal on the line for gymnastics star Simone Biles. Her journey to the Tokyo Olympics could start or end tonight. Plus, embracing the great outdoors southeast of the Twin Cities. Put on your hiking boots. We're headed to Afton and Cottage Grove for our final That's So Minnesota road trip. It's Friday, June 25th. CARE 11 Sunrise starts now. <laughs> Sunrisers, glad you're going to wake up with us this morning. A huge show on tap. Of course, we're going to get into the Derek Chauvin sentencing a little later, but we also got a whole bunch of fun in our music series. Woo! Woo! Davina and the Vagabonds, they are here. They're going to play for you in a couple minutes, about a half hour here. Can't wait for yeah. that. It's going to be mm -hmm. awesome I'm for it sure. Is. But hey, it is a weekend, so we want to know, Guy, are the weather gods going to cooperate? Uh, you know, I think so, because we need the rain and we have rain chances, so that's good. Uh, and you guys can agree, not as humid as yesterday morning, feels right? Feels good. Yeah, it feels pretty good. Twins taking on Cleveland tonight at 7:10. Let's go into first pitch. Temps in the mid 80s. We'll have some clouds for the afternoon and evening hours, and we'll keep the clouds, especially by post game with temps in the upper 70s. Winds east northeast at just about seven miles per hour. Let's go, Twins. Let's get this W. 87 for today, less humid. Tomorrow, a few storms, 86, and then cooling to 83 on Sunday. See a little bit of sunshine in the morning on Sunday may be good for some brunch and then afternoon isolated storms Sunday evening. Right now, temperatures are in the mid 60s under partly sunny skies. And a look at the roads. Quiet start for the Friday morning commute, which is great. This is a live look in the South Metro. The Burnsville split 35 W at County Road 42. Not too many people up just yet and hitting the roads. No crashes around the Metro, but there is a huge weak enclosure along this whole corner up in the northeast corner of the Twin Cities Metro. I'll have more details coming up. Thanks, Alicia. For more than a year, protesters across the country have been demanding justice for George Floyd. Today, they will learn exactly what that justice will be. In just a few hours, ex-Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin will be sentenced for murdering George Floyd. Jennifer Austin is with us from outside the government center. Jen, it is within the realm of possibility that judge will go above the state guidelines for Chauvin's sentence. It, it is. Chauvin will be sentenced on his most serious conviction, which is second degree murder. The state guidelines for that conviction call for a prison sentence somewhere between 10 to 15 years. But Judge Peter Cahill, who presided over the trial, found what are called aggravating factors in this case, including that Chauvin's treatment of Floyd was particularly be cruel because he found those aggravating factors. He could choose to go outside the guidelines and Chauvin's sentence could be twice as long. The state wants Chauvin to get 30 years in prison. The defense has asked for a lesser sentence, obviously, even as low as probation. Here's former Chief Hennepin County Public Defender Mary Moriarty with insight on how this will happen today. It's what this judge thinks is appropriate given all of the cases that he's had and given this particular person who's before him. The judge will directly look at Chauvin and the judge will tell him why he's going to give him the sentence he's about to pronounce. That will be the first time that we have actually heard Judge Cahill talk about what he thought. Mary told us she believes Judge Cahill will choose to sentence Derek Chauvin close to that 30 year in prison mark. Meanwhile, in court today, as sentencing gets underway around 1 30, uh, expect to see George Floyd's family. They have the opportunity to speak to the court and give victim impact statements. Derek Chauvin also has the chance to speak. In Probably not likely that he'll choose to do that. However, he does. He is appealing his conviction and he does have that federal case. So it's not likely he would say anything in court that could complicate either of those matters. A lot of anticipation for this afternoon. Also be a lot of emotions as well. Jen, thanks a lot for joining us this morning. Yeah, and joining us now is legal expert and personal injury and defense attorney Mike Bryant. He's also a member of the Academy of Certified Trial Lawyers of Minnesota. Mike, thanks for being here. Good morning. So, Mike, we are talking about prosecutors asking for 30 years, defense asking for something as low as even probation. Where do you think Judge Cahill lands? Well, I would expect he's probably, from what he's indicated already, that he is going to look at the aggravating factors. He's probably going to look at some place between 20 and 25. 
The defense is asking for time served. So what they're saying is that the amount of time that he's already served in jail, he should get credit for and then should be released on probation on for that. So it's it's not just that probation, it's just that he gets the time served that he's had already. He'll get credit for that against whatever he gets, but uh, it's, it's very likely the judge is gonna go up from the 12 or 12 and a half years and I would guess somewhere between 20 and 25. So Mike, give us an idea after the sentence comes down, what actually happens to a Derek Chauvin? Does he immediately go to prison? And when does the defense team start the uh, appeal process, which are more than likely gonna do? Well, they've already started the appeal process. They've been laying the groundwork for that throughout the whole trial and all the motions. Um, but uh, he'll he'll go to prison. But it's expected with the federal charges. I, what I think will happen is there's going to be a domino effect that they, he'll get sentenced today, and then he'll they'll look at the federal charges, and then if they can work out a deal with the federal charges, he'll end up going to a federal prison versus a state prison, and he'll end up pleading guilty, and then the federal charges will take over, and that'll be what he ends up serving. And then we'll probably see in the other cases, the Potter case and the other officers, they'll look at what his sentence is today and they'll look at their charges also and they may be able to work something out along those lines. And Mike, what are your thoughts about if Derek Chauvin says anything in uh, this sentencing hearing? I mean, a lot of people are saying he probably won't since he's already appealing. What are your thoughts? Well, we're going to hear from two people. We're going to hear from the probation officer who's going to indicate what, if any, remorse Chauvin showed when they talked to him. Um, we haven't had an opportunity other than the Williams video and the couple of words he said in court to actually hear from um, from the defendant. Uh, he may talk, but there's some strong reasons not to talk with the federal charges unless there there's a deal already in the works with the federal charges. Uh, so he may with the appeals and everything decide that uh, that he doesn't want to say anything but this would be an opportunity and there there's if he's capable of it there's a number of things he could say today that could have a big effect all right mike thanks a lot for joining us this morning mike bryant with us this morning on sunrise thank now, you it's been about two months since chauvin was found guilty of murdering george floyd it took the jury about 10 hours or two days to reach their verdict following 11 days of testimony from 38 witnesses this morning, we're hearing from one of the jurors in his trial who says being part of this historic moment didn't sink in until the end. Afterwards, it really was like a shockwave seeing everyone talking about it, reposting it, and knowing that there was millions of people, not just in this country, but other countries as well in the world that were engaged and involved mentally, emotionally, you know, in this case, during the whole trial. Derek Chauvin has been behind bars since then at the prison in Oak Park Heights. Now, the three other former MPD officers, J. Alexander King, Thomas Lane, and Tutal, face charges of aiding and abetting both second degree murder and manslaughter. They have also been indicted on federal charges of deprivation of rights, also known as criminal civil rights violations. The state trial is scheduled for March 7th, 2022. Stay with CARE 11 for comprehensive coverage of the sentencing beginning at 1 30 when we'll bring you sentencing live here on CARE 11. You can also stream it on our digital platforms. New video in overnight of a heavy police presence and fire near Lake and Girard in the Minneapolis Uptown neighborhood. We're working to find out exactly what happened, but we do know this has been a hot spot for recent unrest after the shooting death of Winston Smith and the death of Deanna Marie. Now, if you take a look at this, this is a much different scene this morning. This is a live picture overlooking that intersection. The road is back open this morning now that things have calmed down. All right, 609 on this Friday and Sunrise is live tracking the latest from South Florida after a 12 story building collapsed early yesterday morning near Miami. Right now, the search is still ongoing for survivors. So here's what we know so far. More than 100 people have been reunited with their loved ones, but there are still about 100 people unaccounted for. Among the missing are citizens of several South American countries, including the sister of Paraguay's first lady and her family. So far, one person has died and several others were injured during the collapse. Meanwhile, families of the missing are just waiting for any news about their loved ones. Like the cell phone is ringing, but they just don't pick up. Ho hopefully they are like in, in a hospital and the cell phone is over there. And, and you know, that, that's all I want. That's all I want. Yeah, right now, not only are authorities looking for people, but also clues as to why this 12 story building came crumbling down.
We're looking at what might be uh, concerns with the uh, construction or the condition of the building. We do not have any information uh, at this time to, to really say. Yeah, Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis has declared a state of emergency to help the families impacted by this collapse. He tweeted this out uh, saying that a family reunification center set up uh, with a phone number for folks to call for those who have been found safe and those who have been unaccounted for still. So a busy day uh, in the Miami-Dade County area. But a big question remains, you guys, after, you know, obviously start finding these folks, hopefully, is how did this building collapse? I mean, it was built in the 80s mm -hmm. and they still have so many unknowns. It's less than 40 years old. Yeah. Right. Yeah. A lot of people may be looking at environmental impacts too, maybe uh, something in the ground. So we'll mm -hmm. see. We sure will. Right now, the clock countdown to a potential government shutdown in Minnesota is on. Lawmakers have until July 1st to pass the state's two year, nearly $52 billion budget. That's right. Lawmakers will be back to work today to pass a handful of spending bills. On the agenda is police reform, which could be one of the sticking points heading into the final days of negotiations. They hope to wrap things up by Monday. Let's get to Guy right now for our one thing weather this Friday. Yeah, right now temperatures in the mid 60s and they're partly sunny skies. And the one thing traffic, the one big closure of the weekend is over in the northeast corner. Sorry, folks, but uh, the work has to get done. 694 northbound is closing between 94 and Highway 61 all weekend long. The good news, southbound lanes remain open. Hey, football is expanding at Rose Mountain High High with a league for girls. What makes this game different other than who gets to play? And for this road trip, it's best to gear up. We're talking bikes, boots, and a lot of excitement. We're exploring the wonders of Afton and Cottage Grove straight ahead. And it's a whole vibe this morning. Ooh. Check it out. We've got Davina and the Vagabonds tuning up to rock the Care 11 backyard. Stay with us for this awesome summer concert experience.